So in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to model a birdcage. And the reason I chose this is just to help you become a little bit more familiar with more tools in Maya, specifically polygon tools. So uh, let's just get started and uh, we'll explain those tools as we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a cylinder. And this will be the base of the birdcage, the very bottom. And then scale it up a little bit. So I'm constraining that axis here in the scale by holding down the control button. Bring it out a little bit. And uh, let's see. I think that 16 will be good. Uh, we could change this to be more. Oops. Or less. We could go down. But something like this is probably a little bit too low for what I have in mind. I think 16 might be just perfect. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to go ahead and make a selection of all these faces down here on the bottom, holding down the shift button to add to my selection as I go. Make sure I didn't select any other ones. And I'm going to extrude these faces really quickly, which is Alt E. I'll hit R to go into scale and bring this in just a bit because I want to make sure that each of these edges have three edges around them so that they uh, are held in place when we smooth. And um, let's get a little fancy and I'm going to do another extrude here. Scale it in. Oops. Hit Z don't do that. And uh, I just want to make a little detail here on the bottom. So I'll extrude again and let's just translate this down. Just have a little feature here. Uh, okay, but I'm not done yet. Let's see. I've got to grab these again. And extrude this and just scale it in. There we go. Because I want to make sure that we have those three edges. Okay. And uh, now I'm going to use the Insert Edge Loop Tool, which if you remember is under Edit Mesh. Insert Edge Loop Tool. I've got mine on a hotkey though, so I'm just going to enter that tool right away. And I'm going to make sure that I have three edges on every corner. So I want to make sure this is nice and tight. Okay, so for the inside of this base piece, it is going to be a cage. So um, let's extrude this in. And then let's just go down a little bit. So if I translate down too far, I can just pop right through the, the object. And this would be a bad thing because it doesn't make sense if we look at it in wireframe. So I want to make sure I not do that. And then I'm going to extrude again and bring this in. So I can create that edge right there. And let's just go ahead with the Insert Edge Loop tool and just hold down all these edges. Oops. Okay. And I can exit that tool just by going back to the Translate mode with the W button. So I think that this is looking pretty good for a start of the base. Let me just subdivide, uh, preview it, and select it, and let's see how that looks. So that's looking pretty good. So you can see that my choice of 16 spans around the axis of this object was a good choice because it's not too high res that we have unnecessary edges, and it's not too low res that it's not looking too faceted when we smooth it. So I'll hit that again and unsmooth it. And this is another thing that I have a hotkey for. So you may see me enter this mode and exit this mode quite a bit. <coughs> uh, by the way, Maya's default hotkeys for this are the 1, 2, and 3 buttons on your keyboard. So if you hit 1, it'll go to the lowest res. If you hit 3, it'll go to the highest res. Uh, the reason I prefer to use something like this, especially on a hotkey, is because that way I don't have to think about it. I can just hit one button, and it's going to go back and forth between one or the other. Uh, if you hit the 2 button, it's technically an intermediary sort of halfway to smooth uh, resolution. 
but that's not really helpful for what we use so um, or for what we do so um, I typically will just ignore that and just go straight for this okay so now we can begin constructing the bars of the cage and uh, it looks like we've built up a little bit of history on this object so I'm going to quickly just go ahead and delete the history which again is under edit delete by type history or if you're like me you've got it on a hotkey and you can just do it with a couple um, finger pushes okay so the way I imagine this looking is uh, kind of like a traditional bird cage where it's kind of domed like this and uh, that dome will be made up of bars so this is a good thing to, uh, to practice with um, most of the things you model will end up having multiple surfaces and what I mean by multiple surfaces is multiple objects like this so it'll have the space piece and then the cage bars will all be separate and we'll end up with a big list of things over here that make up the entire model okay so I'm going to go to the front view which you can do here or if you want you can use these hotkeys up here that I've set up so this is just a shortcut for the left and the front, the back, you can even look at the top and the bottom and, or go back to perspective. Um, the reason I have these up here is for you to use if you want in this fashion or you can take the code from these buttons and put them on hotkeys like I have. So I actually use the number pad for this and uh, what I've done is I've assigned control and number four for example to go to the left and control six to go to the right uh, control 8 is front, control 2 is back, and control 5 is up on the top. Um, and then control 0 goes back to perspective. So this is not something you have to do if you don't want to, but this is just uh, a way that I've figured out to navigate my 3D scenes very, very quickly. Uh, it sure is a lot faster than going up here and doing it this way, and it even faster than going up here. So. Um, you know that's what I recommend you do but of course it's totally up to you however you want to do it so anyway I'm gonna look at this at the front and let's go ahead and create a torus so right off the top uh, of your head you may be wondering why I would create a shape like this um, let's rotate it 90 degrees in the X so typically whenever I want to rotate something is I'll just give it a little bit of rotation in the direction that I want. Uh, and by the way, a note about rotation is uh, these handles allow you to rotate in one axis specifically. But if you click anywhere inside of here and start rotating, you'll be rotating along all degrees. So it just depends what you want to do. But usually I'll just be rotating along one of these. And you can tell which one you're using because it turns yellow. Anyway, so I'll rotate it a little bit and then I'll look over here and see which channel is being rotated and then just dial it in. So I'll just type in 90. And now we know that it's rotated exactly 90 degrees. Okay, so let's look at the construction history of this torus. We've got a radius and we have a section radius referring to each the radius of each of these spans. So let's bring that down. So now we have to sort of dial it in by hand. So I'm going to type in 0 0.05. And maybe we'll go even down a little bit less than that and say 0 0.025. Okay, so I think we need a little bit more resolution along the length of this object. So let's go to subdivision axis and change it from 16 and give it twice as many. Let's just say 32. All right, and so now we have the start of the top of the cage. What I'm going to do is go into component mode, and I'm going to delete. Let's just go to wireframe. I'm going to delete uh, three fourths of this, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the edges. So I'm going to go into edge mode. I'm going to make a selection like this, just dragging across. And then using the control left mouse button is all, 
I'll deselect these top edges. So if I look at this in perspective, you can see I've just selected these bottom edges now. Go back to the front view. And I'm going to extrude these downward. So Alt E, go to translate mode, and just bring it all the way down. So not only does the extrude function extrude faces, it also extrudes edges. And it just depends which you have selected. So now I've got that coming down here. Let's put this into smooth mode. And uh, it looks like I'm pretty close to the mark here. It's going to make a selection of vertices and hit F to zoom in. Okay, so it's actually looking pretty good. I might scale this up just a little bit. So you remember that originally this object was a complete circle, and so the pivot point was right in the middle of that circle. Just because I deleted the other faces doesn't change the pivot point of the object. So I can feel confident that it's still in the exact middle of this object from the center. So I'm just going to scale this up a little bit. And uh, by the way, you don't need to actually click on the handle itself. If you just simply have this handle highlighted yellow, you can scale from anywhere. So I can, using the left mouse button, can scale from over here, or I can, oops, I can scale from over here, or I can just scale from here too. Same thing if I had selected this. So it's just a little shortcut. And it's really great because now I can make that selection. I can zoom in where I can't see the handle anymore, and I can still scale. So I'm just trying to get that to be a little bit more centered. And let's do a preview, a sub-D preview. And that's looking pretty good. Um, here's a quick tip. If you want to see the silhouette of your model, just hit the 7 button. What that does is it just turns off all the lights in the scene, so you have no shading, but you have just a completely black outline of your model. Sometimes I do that if it's hard to see things like this. You just have to hit 5 or 6 and go back into your normal shading mode to get rid of that. So great, I've got one bar, but obviously we need more than that to go around here, around the entire cage. So is the solution to simply do this again and again and again so that we have multiple ones? Uh, no. What we'll actually do is we'll duplicate it. So I'm going to go to the top mode, I'm oh, sorry, the top view, and I'm going to open up under the edit menu, duplicate special options. So I'm just going to reset the settings. You'll see something like this. Uh, this is really great. So we have the option to duplicate something. Uh, multiple times if we want, right down here. And we also have the option to translate it a little bit each time we do it. So if I said I want to translate this 0 0.01 in the x-axis, or let's just say uh, in the z-axis, and I want to make 17 of these. Once I hit apply, it's going to do exactly that. So we now have 17 copies, and they all have their unique names here, and they've all been translated exactly 0.1 units from the one preceding it. So if we look at the transforms here, you can see 0.1. This is 0.2 because it's moving 0.1 from its duplication point, and so on. So this is really great. Um, and this is how we're going to create all of our uh, birdcage bars, but instead of duplicating along a direction, we're going to uh, duplicate along a rotation. So I'm not exactly sure how many of these bars we're going to end up needing, but let's just make a guess and say 50. Now the rotation value here is always going to be between 0 and 360, referring to degrees, and I'm not really good at memorizing things. <laughs> I'm not really good at math either, so what I like to do is just take 360 and divide by 50. So we need to rotate this 7.2 times to make it equal. And actually I'm not going to duplicate it 50 times, but 49 times. 
And the reason I'm doing that is because we already have one here. So let's just give that a shot and see what happens. And by the way, these three fields are always going to refer to X, Y, and Z in that order. So in this case, I'm rotating along the Y axis, which is the one that is going directly up and down. And let's see what happens. Okay. So that actually looks pretty good to me. If we want to, we can undo it and uh, try a different number. Let's just see what it would look like if we had 100 of these total. So in 99, in this case, it should be 3.6, right? I think. Yep. So that works too, but you know, it's a little noisy, so I'm kind of glad we stuck with 50. Let's just go back and redo this. 7.2, 49 copies, apply, and there we go. So what's next? Well, let's put a little hook up here, something that we can use to hang it with. And uh, probably a torus is going to be the best thing for this. Let's translate this up. Rotate it by 90. And we'll play with the settings here to get it to look like we want. Make this a little bit beefier. Bring the radius down. So that's looking pretty good. But you know what we really should do is add some kind of chair or swing for the bird to sit on. And then we'll have something that's looking a bit more finished. Let's go to the front view. I'm going to turn off the grid real quick under the show tab. And uh, I don't know why this is grayed out for me, but it shouldn't be for you. Anyway, I've got a hotkey to take it off. Let's see, where is it? There we go. Uh, but that should work just fine for you. So let's create some kind of perch um, and let's use a cylinder this time. There we go. So let's rotate it on what it, which axis? The Z axis. Oops. Negative 90. I'm going to scale it down and bring it out like this. I can even use the control button and constrain that axis. Just scale down this way. Alright. Um, in this case, we have 16 spans going around again. I don't think we need that many this time. I think we can get away with it. And remember, we always want to try and use as few pieces of geometry as we need. Uh, as we need to, because the more you have, the heavier the scene is going to get. And I don't know, if you could imagine, like, maybe there's a scene somewhere where we have a thousand of these things in the background or something, we'd want to make it as light as possible, because that way we're not going to be crashing computers and slowing down and having a bad time. Um, okay, so there's something I'm going to do here. Um, we need to make sure that we have three edges on each side of these, of this edge of course, because we want to be able to smooth it and have this remain intact. And again, if we didn't do that, it would just look kind of like like this, which isn't really what we're looking for. You can see that nothing's being held down and uh, kind of looks like crap. So I'm going to add three edges here, but I don't want to add three edges on either side of this thing twice, because this is a symmetrical object. And whenever you're working with something symmetrical in Maya, you can usually get away with uh, doing one half of it and then duplicating it over. 